If you're raising boys and you want to know how to raise them to become men, you need to stick around because that's exactly what we're going to tell you in like eight minutes. Hey, it's Scott Christopher here with uh, Liz. She's my uh, delightful wife. And uh, as we've sort of teased a little bit there, we're gonna talk a little bit today about raising boys to be men, which seems like a fairly stupid thing to say, or like uh, obvious. Right, but I think so many times we baby our kids and so they don't learn how to grow up and be men. Yeah. Like my oldest son, for example, has, he said he had these friends and their parents have pretty much taken care of everything and they're adults now and they still get money from parents and all these things. And for him, it's been a struggle, but he said to me not too long ago, I'm so grateful that you've made me do things on my own, even though it's been hard and he's had financial struggles and stuff, but he's learned how to be a man and take care of himself. So is, I guess the question is then, is there a difference between you know, raising a boy to be a man and a girl to be a woman. Yeah. Based, I mean, well, I mean, I know there is, but I mean, based on that example, that could very well have been a, a girl too, right? I mean, because right, girls... Right, I don't have any girls, so... That's true. We, so, by way of introduction, <laughs> um, Liz and I are the parents of five boys and men. Would yes. you, would, is it fair to say that, where we're at in life? That yeah, they're, they're not all men. we still got some boys and we... And we won't... We, we won't at this juncture distinguish between which ones are boys and which ones are men because even chronologically, you couldn't, I think, you know, say that even though this one's in his 20s that he's a man. Right. <laughs> it takes a bit of time, but I think I probably did too much for them when they were young. What did, no, okay, so let's, so we're getting into the learning a little bit. And, and Liz and I don't, even though I have a piece of paper, you know, if you've watched any of my videos before with Jeff or even just alone or with whatever, you know that the learning, you'll just absorb as we discuss. We don't have bullet points and PowerPoints and things like that. But anyway, so go ahead. And I'll cut you off because that's Obviously. what I do. Okay. If anyone has seen me do this with other people, you know. No, I but do. I think I probably did too much for the kids, like waking them up every morning for school, making them breakfast every single day. And part of the reason... But now, we... isn't that... But Okay, but before you move on there, I mean, isn't that sort of the traditional, what we expect to a parents to do, mother or... Well, if I'm saying traditional, if I'm going to be bold, right... We wouldn't even say that father does that. I mean, we know that fathers do that. But just in the general traditional sense, you're saying I think I did too much, what, mothering? What do you, what do you right, mean? Right, because like John. Oh, we, do we have to give names? Oh, sorry. That is actually a fake name. I mean, why would she say John? It's so bland. But it's like <laughs> I'm making him get up with an alarm clock now. I don't need to wake him up. He needs to learn that skill. He can cook for himself. He needs to learn that skill. I, I mean, I think it's good that we do breakfast together because that's when we read our morning scriptures and stuff. And, and so that's the reason I've always made a hot breakfast. We have scripture and prayer at that time, but it's important for them to learn to do all that. Now, it, is that a lesson that you slash we learned just recently or did we, as I was, I've been gone a lot. I'll admit it. Um, I've been mostly around throughout their formative years, you know what I mean? But it wasn't like I was home every single morning when they got up for school, especially when they were younger. At what age did you start having them wake themselves up? And did it differ depending on... The child and whether, you know, because we have one who sleeps through fire alarms. You know, it depends on the kid. That is true. And it's easier if the kid wants to go to school. That's also true. But like we said, they have to start doing laundry when they hit seventh grade. So junior high, you're responsible for your own laundry. And if you come up and say, I don't have any socks, then it's your responsibility to wash them. And is it our responsibility to teach them how to do their oh, laundry? Oh yeah, they know how. But how do they know? Because I taught them. Okay, so big lesson on how to raise boys to be men, right? Teach them the things that you expect them to do on their own beginning at whatever age feels appropriate or should there be a, look, no one past the age of 10 should, should be 
spoon fed. Y well, you know. I just think, yeah, we had milestones like junior high, laundry, cook your own food, high school. Uh, you know, like some of our kids are really good cooks and because they're hungry, so they want to make lots of things. What about allowances? Uh, getting a, you know, raising a boy to a man, what is our stance, our position? It's funny because I'm learning too. Uh, on, you know, when they receive, do they receive an allowance? Do they have to earn the allowance? Do they have chores that they regularly they are assigned? They can always earn money. What do you mean by that? Mowing the lawn, doing dishes, whatever, because they have to have money in order to learn how to manage it. But when they get 16, they can get they a can job. They can get a job. Right. And they all have had jobs at age 16, and that's good for them to learn. So the, the, the things that parents in our society are expected to provide, shelter, food, water, clothing, how have we done in terms of finding the balance between what they get legally or otherwise, ethically, societally, as inheritors of clothing and things that they get, presents, things like that. And at what point does it become, get it yourself, buy your own. You wanna buy that, get a job. Those games are $55, you know, I mean. Right, we're, they could earn money for grades too. We did that also. Yeah. You can earn money for grades and we did adjust the grade scale based on the kids potential. So another tip raising boys to men is, you know, set rules, make policies that are equitable and fair, but that are also individual. Oh, for sure. Because I mean, one of our boys is very smart and then for him to get A's is no big deal. So we lessened, <laughs> I lessened so the, the amount. the fee, <laughs> the... <laughs> The re remuneration for an A is less, less for, him. for him. But another one to get C's was like, holy crap, good job. Yeah, I will crap pay starts you. with a C. I will pay you for this. Because for him, it was a huge struggle. And so let's, let's, put, let's put a finer point on it, just for those that are watching that are saying, well, how much? So tell us how much you paid I per... I do 10 for an A, 5 for a B. Okay, but give us the difference between boy. And then for the C, it was like 20 bucks for a C just because I wanted that kid to pass and graduate. Now, one other thing that we require of any kid in our home that earns money from us is that they do pay their tithing. Those of you that are members of the Latter-day Saint faith know what tithing is, or those of you that are Christians of other faiths are familiar with the concept of tithing or passing the plate around, however you want to call it. That one-tenth that goes back to God, you know, we always would say with the condition... You know, we, if you need money for something, we will help you earn it. You can mow the lawns or do extra chores, jobs, but you've still got to pay your 10th back to God, right? Yeah, Did I you... mean, until they were older and it was more their choice. Yeah, well, but... exactly. And that's a video for another, that is another video we're going to talk about is, is uh, allowing your children to choose their faith and their God. And is that, you know, fraught with danger and risk or is that the way to go? We'll have our opinions on that as well. So to kind of just kind of sum up uh, this a little bit, is there any, any final parting words of wisdom each, to help raise a boy to a man? We've done it five times more or less. Each child is different and you have to make things that work for that child because our five boys are all completely different and what'll work for one and help them isn't going to work for another one. And here's my final bit of advice, being the father of boys, raising boys to men, is um, this is my advice to other fathers. Love your wife, respect your wife, play with your wife, have fun with your wife, laugh with your wife in front of your boys. Treat her with the respect that she deserves, requires, demands almost, not personally, right. but I mean, as a gender goes, and, and maybe maybe I'm off base in 2018 saying that, or whatever year it is that you're watching it. But we believe that our boys, um, in order for them to be raised to be men, they need to have uh, a proper male-female relationship modeled for them. And the rest of the world out there is kind of getting gray on gender fluidity and all that stuff. Uh, we don't particularly care about political correctness in our YouTube videos. We just speak from the heart. Um, but we're a man and a woman. And uh, we've been married because we believe that's what God wanted us to do. And we hope that our boys have seen a decent marriage. 
and that that will help inform their manhood as they go forward. So far, I think it's been, and in other videos, we will talk about some of the different paths that kids take, including our own, but for the most part, good or bad have we done? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is out there somewhere. All right, hey, if you've enjoyed our quick little video, we thank you for joining us. And by all means, if you have any comments, could you just uh, leave them in the comment section below? Like it, and if you can possibly manage the time, we'd love to build subscribership. Plus, you wouldn't want to miss one of these, would you? Absolutely not. It's just something. <laughs> we'll see you next time.